What is up guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Fishing with the Yak Pack. I am your host, TJ, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about kayaks. This is insane. Oh my no God. No way. Oh my God. Big and oh, there we go. Ah! Oh, it's a clown boat. Freaking alien fish. What's up? Oh, this is a PD and the gator's gonna get him. No, not these kind. We're going under. But instead, these three beautiful watercraft right here and more. So what I want to do in this video is I want to be able to help you guys make a decision, especially if you're in the market for a new kayak, okay? Things to look out for, things to consider, uh, things of the most importance and kind of the least importance, as well as my top recommendations for buying a new kayak. But before we get started, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Turn that notification bell on and hit that like button. Guys, if we can get this video to 500 likes, I'll be giving away something very special that I will reveal later on in this video. And with the giveaways being mentioned, the giveaway winner for the $50 Carl's Bait and Tackle gift card is linked down in the description below, so go ahead and check that out. It may be you, and if it isn't, good luck in today's giveaway. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So the three kayaks that we have here that I have the most experience out of, okay, and this is gonna come into play later on in this video, Video. Here we have an Old Town Topwater PDO 120, okay? This is a pedal driven kayak, not paddle. Keep that in mind, you see the pedals right there. Okay, keep that in mind. This is actually not the top of the line kayak they have, uh, Old Town has. I believe that is the Predator, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Up next, we have the Bonafide SS 127, which is the top of the line kayak for Bonafide. Both phenomenal kayaks, okay? And then next up, we have a No Limit Adventure 10.4, meaning 10 feet, four inches, okay? This is the kayak that started it all, okay? This is what started fishing with Yak Pack, or back in the day, as a lot of you may, may remember, may know, is uh, Yak Pack Outdoors. This is what started it all. Then we moved to this one, because my good friend, Gene Jensen, AKA Fluke Master, uh, I met up with him and he gave me this kayak. And then we upgraded to the Topwater PDL 120. So in each of these three kayaks, I have a little over a combined three and a half years or so, uh, almost four years experience fishing out of these. So I've got experience fishing bottom of the line kayaks, pretty much top of the line and pedal driven top of the line as well. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Okay, when I'm considering getting a new kayak, what is one of the top things that is gonna be on my mind? This is something that I would say probably a lot of people kind of overlook or, or don't necessarily think they'll need, but this is something that's gonna keep you on the water, guys. And that is the seat, the comfortability of the seat. Something that's gonna keep you on the water the longest, okay? Now these two kayaks right here, you can stand up and fish out of. This one you cannot, this is a sit in. These two are sit ons, that is a pedal paddle paddle okay now that we've cleared that up one of the top considerations for myself something that i know is going to keep me on the water longer is seating so out of these three kayaks right here which one do i think has the best seat and seating arrangement this one clearly out of the picture i'll show you guys why look at this this thing is paper thin it does it's got padding but it is i mean it's atrocious it an hour and a half fishing out of this and my back is killing me and for those of you that don't know i'm in the army i'm a paratrooper jump out of airplanes and i need something that's going to support my back because jumping out of airplanes does not feel good moving right along then we've got the two higher end kayaks okay so this is how i'm going to judge this this is how this is going to go down here we've got the old town and the seating system for this and we've got the bona fide and the seating system for this so it's super simple to adjust both of these literally all you have to do is pull down on these on both sides and it'll basically lean you forward or back. Mine kind of has a little rivet right here where I like for mine to sit. Very easy to uh, to adjust here, okay? As well as these little pull to release tabs. You pull these right here, let me show you guys. And it slides back and forth. Very, very simple, very easy to do when you are in a pinch or whatever the case may be and you need to adjust your seat immediately. The Old Town makes it a very, very simple process. Now, the Bonafide, same thing with the Bonafide. You just kind of pull on these little nylon straps right here. You adjust the seat to wherever you want it to be. I've also got little divots in the nylon straps right here where you can tell I like for my seat to be. Now for the Bonafide, it's a little bit different. You actually have to work a little harder to uh, change your seat around. And there's not as many forward and back options, okay? Now, now I believe there are more forward and back options because this is a pedal driven kayak and it makes that a lot easier. So uh, one thing to keep in mind with pedal driven kayaks is 
I like to sit a little bit closer towards the front when I'm pedaling, so I'm not extending my legs all the way. Uh, if that makes any sense to you, it just makes it a little bit easier for me to pedal the kayak if I'm kind of like riding a bike. You know when you ride a bike, you don't extend your legs all the way out. It's just that makes it a lot more work. You know, work harder, not smarter. Okay, so for the bona fide, you've got two little levers right here. Pull that down, lift this up, and you can move your seat. There's basically three positions that you can have your seat in the bona fide. We're gonna smack those back down. And then also you've got the little uh, foot pedals right here. Uh, they're not pedals, but they're just like foot rest, we'll call them. Uh, easy to maneuver, easy to adjust, not that big of a deal. Uh, the deck space is gonna be about the same between the two. In my experience, I do find that I have a little bit more deck space on the Old Town, and that is due to when I drop the uh, pedal system, it's flat versus having this box right here sticking up top. Uh, and with that sticking up top, you know, you don't really want to stand on that box. I mean, you can, I've done it before with like one foot, kind of put a little weight on it to give myself a, a little bit more of a height advantage, but you don't really want to do that because you don't want to crack that box by any means. But with the old town, it kind of sits flat. So it's not really a big deal if you stand on it. You're not really putting any weight on the box itself because the way it's attached to the kayak, it's kind of hard to explain unless you are actually sitting in the kayak itself. But that being said about the two seating features of the old town and the bonafide, which one do I like best? Which one do I think is more? More comfortable and that is going to be the bona fide by far okay this seat alone I believe Gene told me when he gave me this thing he said whatever you do don't lose the seat because it's like six hundred dollars to replace or something whatever the case is uh, and you can tell the difference and this is like sitting on your couch at home or your sofa uh, at home this is comfortable by all means comfortable way more comfortable than the uh, the no limits adventure but not near as comfortable as this one easy more easy to adjust not as easy to adjust either way i can stay in both of these kayaks longer for a longer period of time if i was stuck to strictly sitting down I would have to go with the Bonafide, but if I can maneuver and, and do whatever I need to do in the kayak, stand up, sit down, do a backflip if I wanted to, uh, it'd be the Old Town for sure. But with that said about the seating system, moving right along. Next up, let's talk about storage capacity in each of these kayaks. We'll start with the No Limits and we'll work our way towards the Old Town. Storage in this kayak, uh, <laughs> well, we are gonna kind of, please don't be a snake or something. Okay, there we go. There we go, a nice little note, stay positive. Uh, storage in this kayak, not much at all. All right, uh, added these two rod holders. Actually, I think it's these, yeah. Added these two rod holders probably three years ago or so. Uh, so it technically only came with two, not a big deal. I don't find myself needing to travel with that many rods unless you're tournament fishing or something like that. Uh, then we've got a little, uh, we'll call it a dry storage, I guess. Not much room going on down there for anything. As you can see, this is where I used to keep my fish finder. This is the box. And look how much space we're already taking up. And then that's how big the box is. So to kind of give you guys an idea. Cup holder right here. Um, all, everything you put in there is gonna spill. So don't even sweat that. And then this right here is not deep at all. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's probably, I don't know, three or four inches deep. So not really any storage with this one. What I used to find myself doing is sitting down in the kayak like this and putting all of my tackle right here, which was very, very inconvenient. And moving right along to the storage capacity of the Bonafide, we'll start up at the top and work our way back. I think that's called the bow. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not a sailor by any means. Uh, this little thing right here, this is, you know, it's got these little rivets in it. You can lay your rods down and it kind of keeps them nice and separated if need be. I never use that feature just because I would always have the rod in my hand or whatever the case is. Um, you can slide your paddle under this. Very, very, very convenient, okay? And the next feature I really like about the Bonafide is when I picked this up from Scott and Gene, uh, Fluke Master, they told me they had put 17 rods down there, 17 combos, okay? So rod and reel combos, 17 of them went inside this kite. Now this storage goes all the way back, as far back as you can see. Let's see if you can take a look. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it does go all the way back and they fit 17 rod and reel combos back there. All right, here we have the little dry box system thing. This is uh, detachable, you can pull this thing out clean it do whatever you got to do just take it out completely i think you may be able to do some sort of uh pedal installation um, or maybe a, a big speed jet or whatever torpedo i don't know something but this does come out uh it is a pretty deep storage compartment and it does keep everything dry i promise you guys i have been soaking wet caught in rainstorms in this thing and everything in there stayed dry 
Moving right along, we have the little storage box. You tighten down by twisting this little doohickey right here. Pull this out, put whatever you need to, you know, quick grab stuff, slide it back under your seat. There's all your deck space. We've got the back compartment right here, which is, it's pretty big. It's big enough to fit one of those uh, little milk crate boxes something like that put some tackle back here i usually put my paddles back here when i'm not using them or store them up front right there whatever else i need put it back here and that about sums it up for the bona fide so we're going to move right along to the old town and we'll start at the top just like we did with the bona fide so one thing that i do like about the bona fide that i don't really like about this kite is see where the, the handle is the transportation handle and then see it on this one it just makes it a lot easier from instead of being there it's on the very tip of the kite with the bonfire i do like that better uh this is the storage hatch here i will open this up for you guys if i can find the the open thing okay i can't find the open thing there it is there we go there we go really really big really deep storage hatch super dark in there you guys won't be able to see anything with the camera uh not as big as this one as far as depth goes backwards uh, but it is really big you can, you can put a whole bunch of stuff down there guys whole bunch of stuff all right so same thing on the old town as on the bona fide like i was talking about with the uh, the deck space when you when you lower this down it fits flush so this thing it goes back down in there it's not as deep as the bona fide but depending on what you're putting in there i put you know cell phone and like multi-tool and scissors stuff i don't want to get rusted put it down in there while i'm out fishing you got some padding right there you put it down it's flush you can stand on it. it's very very sturdy unlike this one you don't really want to stand on that but we've also got little side compartments right here two of them you can see there and that's that's a really quick like just you know as you can see i've got lures in there from the last time i went out you just put stuff in there really quick as you're out fishing uh one thing this one doesn't have that the bonafide does a little sliding drawer it doesn't have a sliding drawer but it does have a little space right here for you be, to be able to put whatever you want back there which is uh convenient it does have this little lock box right here unlock that open that up and that is also some more storage same thing in the back not much difference uh we'll compare these two right here two for two i guess this does have uh right off the top of my head just by looking at it you guys can see this does have uh the old town does have a a little bit more storage space i guess we'll call it cubic inches uh now that's just from the eye on paper that may say something different i'm not 100 sure i'm not a, a expert by any means i'm not one of the people who designed either of these kayaks but it does look like the old town has a little bit more storage and then we got because obviously this is the kayak that i use now because it's pedal driven and it's a thousand times easier to work with i got my little tackle box bag lunch cooler thing whatever you want it to be i got it right there all right, so the thing that's actually the most important thing, stability. You don't want to go flipping out of your kayak. Now, I made a video probably two and a half, three years ago, putting that kayak in my in my father-in-law's pool at his house, and it was a complete nightmare. It's super, super easy to flip. That's why I actually got scared to fish out of that thing is because it was just so easy to flip. And I, I kind of did a little test where if I was to flip that, uh, and the conditions were all good, you know, I didn't bump my head, I didn't get knocked out, I didn't pass out, whatever the case is, uh, if I was, you know, able to get back in it, I tried that and it was nearly impossible because as soon as you flip it, it fills up with water. Uh, the Bonafide, I have not done that test with, but I have had it upside down in water myself, probably in like waist deep water. I just kind of flipped it over to see what would happen. And, and uh, everything stayed intact. No water, you don't have to worry about that, it just flips right back over. Uh, stability on this, I will give that, uh, and now keep in mind guys, this is with me fishing in uh, freshwater like lakes, uh, canals. I, I live down here in South Florida for you guys that don't know. Uh, that's, you know, like I said, lakes, canals, uh, rivers, more inshore fishing than, than anything because I just, I, I really fell in love with inshore fishing. Uh, so we're talking hundreds of boats in and out of the uh, the jetties and the inlets and all that stuff. So we're talking, you know, 50 foot sport fisher boats, boats that cause really big wake, really big waves, been caught out in storms in both of these kayaks. And uh, if I had to give a one through 10 stability rating, uh, I would give this one a eight easily. I mean, you're, nothing's perfect. Nothing, nothing can get a 10, nothing's perfect, but 
uh, I give it an eight. Like you're, you're just not gonna flip this kayak, okay? It's not gonna happen. I mean, you could try all you want to. I mean, it's I've stood on the very tip of it right here and and not flipped it. Stood in the back of it. I can jump up out of the seat and turn around really quick if I need to. You know, if I'm fighting a fish, top water fishing or whatever the case is. Uh, so stability for that, I give it an eight. Stability for an old town, I give it a nine. It's a little more wide than the Bonafide and you've got a little bit more foot room. It's a little more flat along the edges and I'll show you what I mean by that. If I'm making quick feet maneuvers, quick foot maneuvers, see this little lip right here? You know, you, your foot could get caught on that. You know, weird stuff could happen, but this one's flat along the, uh, along the edges, if that makes any sense to you guys. If you were in the situation before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Flat along the edges, look, like, easier to maneuver in this kayak in a, any type of situation. Okay, so we've covered comfort, storage, and stability. The next up we're gonna cover is control, and then I'm gonna give you guys a couple of suggestions on if you don't really want either three of these kayaks. Starting with the no limits. Control, I don't know, I give it a seven. I can control the crap out of this kayak. I've had this kayak, uh, took it home with me one time to Georgia, uh, where my parents live, and I put it in some of the skinniest water possible. Uh, pretty sketchy, lots of snakes, lots of spiders. Didn't enjoy that part, but I got to a secret hidden fishing location. And um, sadly, sadly, I didn't have any GoPro batteries. So caught a bunch of fish that day, a bunch of really good fish, didn't get to make a video. That's neither here nor there. Uh, the stability is good when you stop paddling and you are trying to sit in one spot. It's not good at all. The wind's gonna take you where it wants to take you. Uh, virtually the same thing with the Bonafide, except for uh, the, the wind kind of hits this one a little harder because it is bigger. That's a 10 foot kayak, this is a 13 foot kayak. So you're dealing with a lot more space. It's open right here, so the wind's gonna be hitting your body as well more than it would be in a sit-in kayak where the wind's gonna kind of blow over you uh, rather than your whole body. So very easy to maneuver, very easy to turn, navigate, all that good stuff, except for when the wind starts blowing, if you don't have any kind of anchor system, uh, you're pretty much screwed. The wind's gonna take you exactly where it wants to take you. Now, with the Old Town, hmm, here we go. This is where it gets sauced up, guys. The Old Town is a lot easier to maneuver. The only thing for maneuverability that I could say, I guess could be better on this, is the rudder system when you are turning. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. So when I'm pedaling this kayak, this is what I use to turn left or right. This is the rudder, I have it flipped down, so it's facing down there and it basically turns like this, okay? It tells, you know, I'll tell it which way I wanna go by using this right here. So with that, the turning radius, if you were to have to do a full 360 degree circle or, uh, you know, 180 degree turn, whatever the case is, uh, you're gonna have to most likely pedal forward a little bit and then pedal back. You don't have to kind of get yourself lined up with that little uh, rudder switch right there with the, the left and right position. So uh, I've experienced that more often than not, sometimes even having to use the paddle, but overall not something that's, terribly like just devastating it's not going to take a lot of time to get used to it's pretty quick you pick up on it pretty fast but as far as being able to stay in place it's so much easier especially uh if you are sitting down um now i have found myself doing this while i've been standing up in this kayak fishing but if you're sitting down all you're doing is you're just pedaling your feet forward and it's instant reverse you can pedal forward as fast as you want and then start pedaling backwards and it's going to slow you down stop you and then you'll start going backwards and like I said, when I was standing up and I needed to, uh, you know, the wind was starting to take me or whatever the case is, I would kind of, you know, hold the rod in one hand, reach down and just kind of give, grab one of the foot pedals right here. I'd grab one of these and I'd kind of give it a little, a little twitch forward or twitch backwards. That'll get that rotor to spin and it'll kind of stop you for a second or two. Uh, sometimes inconvenient, I guess, just depends on what I'm doing. But as far as maneuverability goes, the Old Town beats these two kayaks uh, by far. There's no question about it. And uh, a big factor to that is the pedal driven system but with that being said guys there's one other kayak that i wished i was able to get my hands on to be able to put to the test like i have done these three kayaks right here and that would be the vibe sea ghost 130 those things look awesome i've heard a lot of good things about them i fished out of one uh, a handful of times but not enough to you know fully be able to compare contrast and judge like these three right here but ultimately, if you decide to not go with any of these kayaks, it's not gonna hurt my feelings whatsoever. Pick what's best for you. My best advice for you is to demo the kayak. Go test the kayak if you're able. If you are not able to, at least go somewhere that sells the kayak that you want or that you think you want. Go sit in the kayak. Go act like you're paddling the kayak or pedaling, whatever the case may be. Uh, act like you're sitting down in the kayak, you know, setting
setting the hook on a fish or if it's a stand-up kayak you're standing up to fight the fish to try to net it just do different things that that you would normally do while you were fishing on a kayak just do things like that while you're sitting in a kayak even if it's in the middle of the store if it's in the middle of bass pro shop just set the kayak on the ground and just kind of test it out that way uh that's gonna give you a better feeling than not having done it at all but with all that being said guys i greatly appreciate you tuning in i appreciate you guys watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new here turn that notification bell on and hit that thumbs up guys i greatly appreciate it it's free it costs you nothing to do but with that being said thanks again for watching guys i love y'all we'll catch y'all next time